of course. Hey Star Wars fans and action figure collectors, welcome back to episode 3 of Setting the Scene. If you're new to this, uh, this is basically a little video series that gives me an opportunity to actually play with the figures and play with the toys and set them up and pose them up and stuff like that and take some photographs. Um, so that's exactly what I'm going to do. This episode we're going to be switching up to 6 inch scale. The first two videos I did were of 3 and 3 quarter inch. So we're going to jump up and we're going to dive into the Clone Wars era, more specifically the Siege of Mandalore. So I'll be using uh, two of the Mandalorian Super Commando. I'll be using two of the La Mandalorian Loyalists. Uh, I'll be using Bo-Katan, Ahsoka, and two of the 200, uh, the 332nd, sorry, uh, clone troopers, the Ahsoka troopers, and maybe a couple of extra figures in the background. Uh, the main focus will be the Mandalorian Super Commandos and the Mandalorian Loyalists, and the rest will hopefully slot into the background and just, just fill some space. So... I've got a couple of ideas, I've been working on the posing and stuff for a little while so I'm excited to sort of sit down and just, just muck around and see what I can come up with and uh, at the end we'll get some shots and we'll share them so I'll just talk way through the video and um, let's, let's get to it. So just before I get started I just thought I'd show you, this is my little setup, I'll bring this sort of table into my room, this is where I review, this is where I do all my little videos that are tabletop sort of stuff. Um, I actually added these two sort of... Um, you know, they're wall brackets for adjustable shelving. So they stand up like that. So then I'm able to just get any sort of colored card. Um, so we'll just sort of card stock I've bought from the, uh, you know, stationery store. You'll probably find this in most sort of station areas. I'll just clip them up there so I can have a backdrop and, you know, a base. Um, but at the moment I've only got sort of three colors to muck around with. So most of my videos are gonna gonna contain that. But I think the blue and the black sort of works well for you know, the Siege of Mandalore, so I think it's going to work, so I need to uh, get this camera on the tripod and we'll get to work. Alright, so here we go, I've got my figures lined up, I've got the first, oh, I haven't grabbed all of them, I just want to, I've got these two spare, um, just in case, I need to try and get them in the background later on, um, I just don't want to take away from using the Mandalorians, this is kind of what I want to focus on, and I'm also going to use this accessory from the new uh, Return of the Jedi Boba Fett, um, just to kind of see whether I can get that to work, mainly just for the fact that it's a wire, not necessarily because of the, um, the darts, so we'll see. So my idea was that I have a couple of these guys, a couple of the Loyalists, you know, maybe led by Bo-Katan on the, on the battleground here. Um, and they're trying to just subdue a cap, a couple of these, um, you know, Mole supporters. Uh, just just on the battleground, basically. Just trying to subdue them and, uh, you know, slow them down a little bit. So I've got my uh, trusty blue tack here. I'm actually going to, I'm not going to try and use stands this time. I'm hoping I can sort of pose them up a little bit and get them to sort of just, just sit on their own. Just try and do it without support. But I may need to use the little bit of blue tack just in case. Just, you know, just for that extra composure. You know, you know what I mean? Not composure, but... So, I want to take the sort of blasters out of these guys' hands for the moment. Decide who needs them. I'll just put those two guys over to the side here, because I do want to start with... one of these guys. So, I basically want to get him... sort of on the ground. He's been knocked back. So he is still armed. It's still able to get a shot off or two, potentially. But this is where I sort of had the idea for the uh, for the rope. We'll tweak that a little bit after. So there we go. He's sort of he's been pulled back. This is sort of where I wanted to bring one of these guys in. And uh, this guy is sort of using a little bit of force to subdue this guy. I don't think they're interested in killing them. I think they just sort of, you know, you've made the wrong choice here and in supporting Maul. Um, you know, it's bigger than, bigger than what it is. So... 
So, you know, most Mandalorians would be equipped with this sort of arsenal anyway. Um, but this sort of just works for the shot. So basically just want to have him sort of kicking up and sort of pulling this guy back. Don't know whether I want to go around the neck. That might be a little bit too much. I'll just try and zoom up there. I'm going to sort of get those hands lower. Maybe bring that around, down around the, uh, down around the chest. If I can sort of get the rope to sort of hook onto the, around the sort of shoulder bell armor there, that'll work well. Without it popping out of his hands. with that. So then you just need to get that guy. Again, it's all about balancing this guy at the back. So he's almost sort of using using the 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 Moldalore in here is a sort of extra support to sort of fall back on with the uh, weight of the rope. So there we go, sort of got him there. I'll sort of just bring that. Bring that arm down a little bit. Just give him a little bit more force. sort of coming up so hopefully he'll hold he may not I may need some blue tack support for that because I think he's a uh... all right so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna tweak the pose a little bit get him not so far down give him sort of a bit more of a wider stance so you know his center center of balance is a little bit wider perhaps that might sort of give it a better look too He's sort of pulling back on the on the guy. There we go, that kind of works for me. He's almost lifting him back off the ground. It's sort of, it is almost back heavy a little bit. So this is where we bring in this guy, and I want this guy sort of. He's just just coming for a landing, and he's given this guy a bit of a right hook. So he's holstered one weapon. That reminds me, I need to holster those two. And that guy there, and hopefully I don't screw it up. So yeah, that's that's holding okay. It's sort of just counterweighting a little bit. All right. So what I'm going to do, just for that little bit extra support, a little bit of blue tack to this guy's knees. And I'll sort of tuck it in the back so it shouldn't be able to be seen when he's being shot later. This is a, uh, I guess I've kind of got to try and kind of build the scene around where I've placed the figures now too, so it's not so bad. It's kind of, kind of where I want it. The good thing is afterwards I'll be able to move the camera around, so that's fine. It's also starting to pull up the pull up the card I've got them sitting on, but that's okay. It's alright, hopefully a little bit more weight. It's basically this guy's just gonna be flying in and he will have just given him a a right hook across the face there. Or mid punch. Sort of keeps that sort of balanced as well. It just takes a little bit of um, trial and error sometimes just to get it right, just to get it looking right. You know, I could spend far longer than I do in the videos here just to try and get it looking good. All right, 
so this guy can have this weapon in hand as he's coming down. So I'm, I'm kind of happy with the way that looks now. That looks all right. You know, I could make some small tweaks in between now and when I start shooting, but for the most part, I think this is okay. I think this looks fine. Um, again, he may just need a little bit extra support as well. So not completely to plan of not having any support, but um, so I think I might just have this guy facing off with um, Bo-Katan himself. You know, it's all, it's more about the Mandalorian loyalists, you know, Bo-Katan and her army sort of getting the upper hand over these guys. So, you know, this guy's sort of still... Still, like, heavily in the action here. But I may not, may not end up so well for him. I do really wish they uh, went down the route and did a Gar Saxon figure. I think that would have been absolutely awesome. But, uh, you know, these figures weren't easy to get here in Australia. Uh, you know, the Super Commandos weren't even available. I had to pay, pay quite a bit just to get them. Sent from the US, so... You know, it wasn't an overly fun experience trying to collect them. But uh, I'm, I am glad I have them, and uh, you know, being able to being able to feature them in a video like this and use them use them a bit more than just sticking them on a shelf kind of gives me a little bit more money for value. So what I'm trying to do is just trying to get him problem is that with with the jetpacks they are sort of a little bit back heavy. We kind of got to counterweight that. I don't really want to take them off, so I'm not going to do that either. But um, it's just about getting it balanced, finding it, finding a spot, using that articulation to really, you know, using all the joints just to, you know, you got to twists and bends and and all that sort of stuff just to try and get it to. A good spot and I've just noticed that those wires have snapped there only on that arm but that's a bit of a bummer but it's, uh, that was probably the only real big issue with that sort of Django Fett mold that these are based off of is those sort of wires that are there they sort of seem to have fixed that with the new Boba Fett So I am going to use blue tack for this guy. Just a little bit extra support. And my main concern is the sort of, as figures tip, they will sort of lift the card up. So I may have to think about getting a um, sort of a weightier surface, surface and maybe gluing that on there. Um, or maybe just spraying my table black. So I've always got a black base. So with Bo-Katan sort of being a, um, just a really great sort of new figure with great articulation, I kind of want her sort of flying in and kicking him back, or about to, but um, yes, yeah, not going to be an easy feat without without a stand. So, uh, you know, I'm just going to work on this for a little bit and see what see what we get done. <laughs> So what I've been able to do here is sort of bo is basically acting as a counterbalance for this guy sort of falling apart and the way I've sort of falling back and the way I've been able to pose it is, you know, that extra support she's holding on to his blaster and sort of pushing it away as to avoid, you know, getting getting hit herself and she's sort of kicking him back. Um, but I'm always wondering whether she just sort of take a leg out or just aim a little bit more towards the stomach. Um, which, you know, that's not an easy surface there, so that may need a little bit extra support there, but I'm trying to just sort of get that sort of counterbalance just right, that center of gravity, 
sort of right between the two and hopefully I can get it looking okay as if she's sort of looking straight at him you know being completely aware of you know what she's doing and there seem to have it it's a little bit wobbly but it's uh it's working so I'm gonna have you know maybe this guy's come in to sort of intervene with the with the two loyalists taking out the super commando and this and Bo Katan sort of just sort of jumping into uh jumping in with the assist and I wonder if I can't get a uh, two-legged kick going here so she can be all right so what I've done here is I've just to sort of pull her up a little bit as I've sort of bent her elbow and tucked the upper part of her arm sort of under a line more aligned with her body just to sort, of sort of pull her up a little bit um, just so she's not completely like tilted back I uh, have given her a little bit of extra support on the feet which or well, on one foot anyway just on the uh, um, but I do need to just tweak that a little bit so it can hide hide the blue tack in the back of the sort of feet foot there it's not perfect but try and get some angles and if I need to tidy it up a little bit in uh, Photoshop afterwards I'll, I'll do that again just sort of tweaking the uh, sort of tweaking the pose there yeah, he sort of um, lost a little bit of posture there throughout that process so I'm just going to try and counterbalance again there we go I think that's good I'm happy with that she's still holding the weapon she's aiming hers at him she's also got the other foot sort of about to sort of rest on that leg so she's coming in for the assist and uh, yeah I might just uh, have this sort of clone this guy here sort of running around running past in the background and uh, try and get some shots with just this guy sort of background foreground and uh, you know just in a random spot so I'll pose him up as if he's sort of running and I'll just see what I'll see what I can do with him when I take the shots so um, I'm kind of happy with the way it's set up Hopefully this guy will sort of blur out mostly. But uh I might get the other one out too. And uh then I'll, I'll quickly just take the tripod off and we'll we'll get a look around so I can actually move the camera a little bit more for you guys. Alright, so this time I should be able to get a bit more of a better look for you guys um, about what I've basically got going on here love to sort of just tweak that a little bit there we go it's not too bad again I could probably spend a lot longer getting this right but I love the fact that I managed to get these two figures literally balancing from each other's weight um, I'm a bit worried to sort of start moving that around <laughs> because um, if I get up and walk around it will probably uh, I'll probably lose it so all right I'm gonna tweak the lighting a little bit and uh, I'll get some shots. <laughs> 